Next up, will lane picking patients really cut your commute? All right, traffic tricks, what have we got? The myth is it is better to stay in one lane in heavy traffic than to lane change. You'll get to your destination in the same amount of time. I don't know, dude. When I'm in traffic, I change lanes all the time. I think it works. All right, so lane weaving doesn't work. I like it. So the team is all revved up and ready to race. But what's the rush hour route? Now to test this myth of weaving in and out of traffic versus staying in one lane, we are gonna be driving down to San Jose Tech Museum. It is exactly 46 miles from our shop. Now Carrie and Grant, they're gonna be weaving in and out of the lanes to see if they can find the fastest moving lane. Me, I'm gonna pick one lane and stay on it until I get to my destination. And we'll see which one gets there faster. Carrie's freedom to choose may have given her an early advantage. And then give the wave. We're gonna do it and give the wave. But it's come at an adrenaline burning cost. Oh. It's neck and neck. Hey, look, I'm passing. Hi there. <laughs> I'm in the same lane, and I've just passed Carrie. And Tori just passed us. Shut up. Yeah. And that's how it goes until the halfway mark. Calm and constant versus stress and duress. Uh -uh, uh -uh. Oh my god, this guy hates me. But with Team Weave once again in a narrow, hard-earned lead. Oh you are. The traffic conditions alter radically. For the final 20 miles, vehicle density is reduced to the point where both cars are cruising along at the speed limit, meaning Carrie and Grant maintain their lead to the finish line. One hour and eleven minutes. But the bad news for Carrie is. It was a lot of risky road maneuvering for no reward. Which means we have to test this further, which means I might go gray by the end of this episode. No! So today is the final experiment for our weaving versus staying in one lane myth. But there's going to be a difference, and that difference is we're going to fill each lane with a car, marked one through four to correspond to their lane. And Tori will be the weaving driver. He'll be in a car marked X. I'll be in car number one. Where's Carrie Byron, you ask? Oh, yeah. It's a much nicer ride. Yep, Carrie's getting high in the sky to keep an eye on the road race below. All right, Buster, let's do this. A few minutes into the test, and Tori's already leading. Dude, I can't even see Tori. He passed me. I went over two lanes to the right, passed me, and he's gone. Grant can't see Tori, but Carrie can. All right, I can see car X has chosen lane two and is scurried ahead of the pack. But not by much, just a couple car lengths. Question is, how far behind are the others? First to appear is Grant. What's your time? One hour and 19 minutes. I beat you by three minutes. A mere 4% time difference. And close behind by a minute is car number two. But while waiting for the third lane sticker, time ticks on and the gap is significantly larger. And he was 13 minutes behind me. And when the final of the four arrives, 25% slower than Tori, the lane staying myth looks down and out. So where do we stand with the sticker weave dilemma? Well, with every single test we've done, the weaver will beat the person staying in one lane every single time. In test one, in traffic that wasn't that heavy, the lane sticker lost by around 2%. And in the ultimate test, all the lane stickers lost by anywhere from 4% to 25%. So what does that mean? Well, the myth that staying in one lane will get you to your destination in the same time as weaving is busted. Weaving will get you there faster, but just barely, and it's not that safe.